This little video is designed to just help you understand how length and cross-sectional area affect the resistance of a wire. Now we looked at the rheostat and you had a question to describe and explain how the rheostat works using your knowledge of resistance and length to help. And in the bottom of this picture, you can see a diagram of a rheostat, a variable resistor. Now this is a slide type rheostat. It's constructed of resistive wire, so a wire made of a metal, wound round a cylinder, which is made of an insulating material. One terminal, in this instance, terminal A, is connected to one end of the resistive wire in the coil and the other to a slider. So terminal B is connected to the slider. The slider connects directly to the wire in the coil. So this slider is touching here. This determines what length of wire in the coil is included in the circuit. We know resistance is proportional to the length of the wire. So the greater length of wire included in the circuit, the greater the resistance, meaning less current will flow. The sliding contact is used to increase or decrease the resistance easily, removing the need to change resistors and interrupt the circuit. Now, you should have written an answer to this question in your book, so I would like you to pause this video now and to check your answer, making sure that you have all of the details. So factors that affect resistance. Remember from last week, or last lesson, resistance is the measure of how a material resists the flow of charge. It's trying to stop that flow of charge. And we investigated how the cross-sectional area of wire affected resistance. Let's look at the results. So you should have a graph of results that looks like this, plotting the resistance in ohms against the cross-sectional area in this case, it's been plotted in millimetres squared. You should have your points neatly plotted and a line of best fit, ignoring the final point, which was anomalous. You should also have a title and you should have a sensible scale for both your axes. Pause the video now and check your graph. So our analysis, in case you had any issues with your graph, just check that you used the correct calculation. The resistance was equal to the potential difference that we measured against the current. It's the ratio of potential difference to current. And the area, the cross-sectional area of the wire was calculated by pi r squared, but we actually had measurements of diameter. So we needed to divide our diameter by two. You can see from the graph that as the cross-sectional area increases, the resistance decreases. A thicker wire has a smaller resistance than a thin wire. Resistance and cross-section area are inversely proportional. If you double the cross-sectional area, you halve the resistance of the wire. So factors that affect resistance. Remember, for current to flow, electrons have to be able to move. So increasing the area decreases the chance of electron collisions with metal ions. In a thick material, the charge carrying particles are able to move through the conductor more easily, which is what reduces the resistance. Remember, the resistance increased with length because it increased the chance of electron collisions with the metal ions. So length and area um, are, do not have the same effect on the resistance of the material. So this needs to be copied and completed into your book. So pause the video now and copy out the sentences and then you can press play to check whether your answers are correct. It should read, as the cross-sectional area of the wire increases, the resistance decreases. The resistance of a thin wire is greater than the resistance of a thick wire because a thin wire has fewer gaps for the free electrons to pass through. 
resistance and the cross-sectional area of a wire are inversely proportional. However, resistance and length of a wire are proportional. <laughs>